Hey everyone, welcome to the Saltwater Weekly Update. I'm Chuck Mayer, your host, and we're getting ready to get into some of the new fish that came in with saltwater. Uh, as I have talked about in the past videos a lot, we are finally getting in all the sizes and all the different types of tanks, stands, and canopies that we haven't had in a little while. So the selection has never been better if you're ready to either do a saltwater tank or expound on your existing tank. Uh, Hayden and Richard just got back from the show in Charleston this past weekend, and with them, they brought a ton of really cool new corals. There are a lot of really nice fish that Reagan's gotten, and we're gonna get into those right now. I know we're always talking about live corals and invertebrate tanks and things like that, and one thing we get away from is just a decorative saltwater tank. And I had an account just yesterday that I went over, and they weren't interested at all in doing corals, but they had a nice live rock skeletal system laid out in the tank um, that we did some work on, and they had a great collection of fish. And when the gentleman asked me, you know, what, you know, what can I do but I don't want corals, you know, I thought, because I don't preach it very much, just some of the things that you can do to kind of decorate a saltwater tank that doesn't have live corals. Some of this looks really, really good if done properly in a tank. And yeah, it's not, it's not a purist idea of doing a saltwater tank, but there are plenty of really cool saltwater tanks all around the world that are done this way. A lot of times in zoos and things like that. So, and especially if you have little kids, uh, this is a great way to decorate uh, your tank with a coral that won't die or that can't die. So lots of cool structures and lots of cool ways you can do that just to go in your natural rock work. Um, and a lot, and it makes it interesting for the fish too. So uh, they clean up very easily. So that part is not that hard either. We do use them in some of our service accounts. So that's something that you may want to consider and that I don't talk about enough and wanted to bring up in the video. Okay, so we have saltwater fish because we have Big J and we have Little R. <laughs> <laughs> Which we call Fruit Loop because she loves Fruit Loops. If you don't watch the grind, you can't learn how some of these names come up. But in-house, we have our own names and code. I don't want to know what anybody calls me behind my back, but let's get into the saltwater fish right now. Okay, we are starting with a very small emperor angel with very adult colors. Uh, this is what got everybody over here this morning when we were unpacking fish because it is very rare that you get uh, emperor angel that colors up with adult colors at this size. And I can't tell you why they change and when they change, but typically this fish would still be in heavy juvenile colors. And right now, this guy is fairly small. You can see kind of against my hand. And he does not even have a trace of his juvenile colors at all. So, if you have ever been wanting, if you have a smaller tank, you have been wanting an Emperor Angel, this is a great way to get a young, adult-colored angelfish with a lot of color in your tank. Koye parrotfish. Um, this is a real parrotfish. <laughs> they have great color, and we do not get in parrotfish very often, simply because they get big, they are big, and they can knock stuff over and tear up things. However, this is a reef-safe parrotfish, at least for the most part. I don't know how much any fish is truly, truly, truly reef-safe, but this guy is just a phenomenal fish, and uh, there's no way I can not show him because it just shows you how bountiful and amazing the ocean and the color and array of fish are. The Tamini Tang is a tang you cannot go wrong with. Um, I do show it every time we get one in because we sell them every time. It is one of the most hardy tangs you can get. It is highly adaptable with other tangs, um, such as your Zebrasoma types, Paracantharus, um, lots of other different types, as this is a Tinaquitas and its own small little group of species of tangs. We typically only have a few of at any given time. Uh, this is very, very hardy, a good first fish, and uh, one of my top picks. You can't go wrong with a sailfin tang. If you've just got a new tank or a newly established tank, and you've gotten past the clownfish stage, uh, there is nowhere to go next but to the sailfin tang. It's one of the hardiest tangs we sell. It's one of the best fish for the money. It's incredibly long-lived. It's a fairly smart fish. It will very much get to know who feeds it. Um, it is not overly dominant, and it is, as you can see, this guy's only been in for probably three or four hours, and he is fairly relaxed 
and not worried about a thing. So sailfin tang, one of my top five fish, definitely something you want to try if you've just got a newly established tank. Uh, Basilet you're not going to see us have very often um, because it is fairly rare is the rainbow basilet. Um, some basilets can be a little aggressive. I don't know a lot about this fish because I haven't had very many. Um, but in terms of color, in terms of size, size being that he will not get very big, so he is better adapted for smaller tanks um, or in a group community in a larger tank, but a fish that just came in today and something truly rare and wonderful. Tricolor anthias are beautiful. Um, it is really a cool type of anthias that we have in groups. Lots of different types of pink and yellow in the bodies with these guys. Um, you got to feed a little heavier if you're going to keep Anthias, but this is a species of Anthias too that will actually stay out. One of the rarer Anthias just came in, he's going through acclimation right now, but I do want to show is the Sunburst Anthias, and if you need a better picture you can kind of Google this guy. It's a very fat bodied Anthias, it doesn't get very elongated. Um, it, ah, thank you very much Master Richard. Um, absolutely beautiful, beautiful Anthias, it's a deep water Anthias. Um, hardier than a lot of types of anthias. I have really good success with these when I have sold them for service. Um, you can also see the naso tang around it, but if you're in the market for a really beautiful, beautiful fish, the sunburst anthias is one of my top two, the other one being the squareback. What's the nickname for the sunburst anthias? I don't know. Fathead. Fathead. <laughs> The uh, Hawaiian Zebra Moray. A lot of people have seen the larger Zebra Morays in here as they are not typically aggressive towards invertebrates or fish if they are kept well fed. It is a beautiful, sometimes lethargic, sometimes very active moray. Um, but we got a small one. And typically when they come in, they're big, um, a little you know, cumbersome as far as how they are with, with a lot of size, but this particular one is young. So if you ever wanted a young zebra moray or a young fairly reef safe moray, if I can use that word temporarily, <laughs> um, this is a great one. How about a bucket of pajama cardinals? Um, if you ever doubt how cool pajama cardinals are, just put about four or five of them in your reef tank and see how they kind of huddle together and kind of keep with each other and add just that, that, I don't know, if, if it's the way that they, schooling would be the wrong word, it's the way they kind of bunch together and shoal together that make them just such a really, really cool fish when you have them in mass. Individually, they're not gonna blow anybody away, but when you have four or five of them, really cool. And these are small enough to where you can put a nice little group in your reef tank. Speaking of schooling fish, check out these black and gold chromas. Um, you can group them in exactly the same way, but you can actually have more of these. It's cool to have little chromas popping in and out of your reef at different points that catches your eye. Um, and these we don't have very often, so very, very cool if you like the colors black and yellow. And uh, they're not too expensive, so that's another high point. Black Midnight Clowns. Uh, these are really, really cool. They're, they've got the, the very similar body style to the maroons with basically the moon on the crest of their head and the sky, the dark sky all around it. It's kind of what they look like to me, but black midnight clowns, very, very cool clown fish. Okay, with a very mustard-like appearance, the uh, yellow mimic tang is back in. This is a fish, again, I say it every video, but we sell out pretty fast. Uh, why? Because it's extremely hardy. Um, it's extremely cool to look at. It's not a very scared or skittish type of tang. It typically goes in eating. Uh, they typically come in extremely healthy. And while you can't see it really well in here right now, if you come in in the next couple of hours once Reagan's got it well acclimated, you'll see it swimming around the tank. And with a black background or a pretty um, dense packed reef tank, it is a phenomenal fish. So to close, uh, if you're looking to upgrade or have any new tank come in, you want to get into salt water, the stands and canopies and tank selection now, finally 110s are coming back in this week. Tanks that we've been out of for a very long time and that are hard to get in other places. We have got them coming in, our selection changes daily and I just did want to update you with that because this is kind of the prime time for uh, new tanks and tank designs and things like that. If you need help with your reef tanks, if you need help with any questions or stuff like that, 
don't hesitate to give us a call or come down, especially this weekend. We still have probably four, five, maybe even six more boxes of salt water that are being unpacked right now. This video got shot a little early, which is why you don't see any more than you do. But there is a lot more back there and a lot more coming. So uh, I will not be here next week. Uh, Reagan will be doing it, uh, our famous Fruit Loop. We'll be doing the video next week, so uh, you definitely want to pay attention to her and reach out to her if there's anything that you don't see in here that you want. Um, have a great week. God bless. Happy Easter, and I will see you two weeks from now.